Hello and welcome back to Scale War Machines. Well, this is going to be the last video of 2023. It'll go out either on Christmas or just after Christmas. I just wanted to thank you all for supporting the channel throughout 2023. I'm really grateful. Let's take a look at what's been going on. Okay, first things first, as this video is going out either on the 26th or around the 26th of December, I was sent this new product, it's an airbrush by Galeri, which is going to be launched on the 26th of December and they asked if I could do a review around that date. And this is the new 0.2 airbrush from Galeri, brand new product, it's called the Mobius and that really is a nod to some of the design features and character traits incorporated in the design. But here it is. This is their Mobius, freshly launched today or around today. And they're also running an excellent promotion in terms of discounts during the holiday periods. Do check it out. I'll put a link in the description. This looks like the previous airbrush I had a look at. Really well made. What do you get in the box where you get the, the airbrush itself, which is a double action and for the first time features the more squared off trigger that you will have seen on perhaps on some other airbrushes by other manufacturers. So this is a 0.2, so it's a fine double action airbrush. Of course, gravity cup. It comes with one paint cup. There we go. And I've checked the thread size and it's the same thread size across all their range. The cup is a 2cc cup. It's also highly polished for ease of cleaning. And also in the box, you get a few spares for the O-rings. There they are. Tip protector as well. And some lube. And of course, you get plenty of guidance in a quick start guide, which is really useful. So looking at this, you've got a nice pressure fit lid. Galeri's clearly gone for the coloured highlight route that some other manufacturers are increasingly going for. And there seems to be some sort of gold feature here and the needle chuck is in a gold color as well but this is really really nice now what signals that this is going to be a higher end airbrush to me is the mac valve that you have there on the body of the airbrush so you can adjust your pressure whilst you're spraying you can spray and adjust and i love that feature what else well it's got this twist here and nod i suppose to the mobius motif it's got a paint limiter at the end double action of course you can adjust the spring tension on the trigger, which again is a high-end feature. No presets as such in the trigger adjustment. Now this is interesting, the squared off trigger. Galeria are really good at engaging with feedback and one of the pieces of feedback I'd give is perhaps a slightly higher trigger would be nice. But it's interesting that they've gone for the square design. You can certainly feel the trigger a lot more than you would with a more circular button style. I have to say it's not a major consideration for me, but it does definitely give a bit more grip. You can feel it. But with the stylized cutaway in the tail of the airbrush, you can still quick flush if you so wish. And it comes with a quick connect adapter. So some of the features that make this stand out, it's got again, like some of their other brushes, a unique air nozzle system. They call it their tangent micro air channel nozzle. Let's have a look at that. Ah, yes, it does have air channels. That's really interesting. Have a look at that. But again, they're often creating their own nozzle designs and trying to devise new innovative approaches to that. And you can see that involves some form of channeling around the nozzle that then feeds into the main tip. It can rotate, but that obviously is very easy to interchange. It's a 0.2, so often with 0.2 airbrushes you have a much finer nozzle and in this case it's interesting to see that it's all one integral piece that's going to make changing needle and nozzle combinations really easy the needle itself is a 0.2 so this is very much an airbrush designed for fine line and fine paint atomization this again cements for me that Galeri is a serious proposition. They've launched a new website. They're doing all sorts of promotions. They did so for Black Friday. They're doing so again for the holiday period over Christmas. But the build quality, once again, is really, really nice. It feels good in the hand. I really like the inclusion of a Mac valve. That is just absolutely essential for me. I will be running much more detailed tests of the Galeri products that I've been sent 
because I've also looked at their slightly lower end airbrush in a previous update. That was the GHAC 98D, which was really impressive. And my plan, if you're interested, is to showcase all these airbrushes in a dedicated airbrush show video as I plan to relaunch another series of the airbrush show. What I propose then is to compare this in terms of spraying with something like the Sotar. So this is from Badger, again, a double action airbrush and I've put my own high roller trigger on it. I did some tests and I've kept those tests. So I'm gonna mix up some blue paint and we're gonna see how this sprays. If you saw the Sotar video, I've still got the spray tests from that. We're gonna do a similar thing, same paint, same thinners. And I think it'll be a good comparison to see how something like the Mobius with the 0.2 compares. We're using the same paint, thinned in the same proportions. It's just Tamiya XF8 thinned with their 20A thinners. I've set the compressor to two bar. Okay, getting quite a bit of splatter. Well, I'm getting a huge amount of splatter, so something's gone wrong here. Now, bear in mind, I did take the whole thing apart, so this could well be my fault. Too thick. Perfect. Too thin. Okay. I'm just going to thin the paint. So that's the consistency of the paint I was trying to spray. I'm going to dilute it even more. What I've done therefore is to dilute the paint even more. And let's just see if that helps. So this is thinner than I'd usually dilute the paint. I'm just going to put through a few drops in there. Let's see what happens. As you can see initially, I was using Tamiya Flat Blue diluted in the usual way I would, and I was getting way too much splatter. It took me a while to sort it out, but what it is is that clearly the Mobius loves super thin paint. I ended up diluting the paint to a consistency that I would say is more thinned than I would usually go for by about 20%. And I seem to have the airbrush dialed in now. And it's just a useful reminder and it certainly helped jog my memory and make me think, you know, maybe my paint's just too thick here. And that's exactly what was happening. So I've thinned it to get something more like the correct atomization. So these are the little tests I did with the Sotar. Let's see how it compares and how accurate it is. It's landing the paint nicely atomized. And you can see I can even vary the intensity within each little graph paper square. You can go from soft very intense and it will hold it and it's accurate enough to keep it within those little what are they two millimeter square boxes so let's see if I can draw around an entire box yeah, not terribly uh, steady-handed but yeah okay that's performing much more as I'd expect in fact I'm going to take the air cap off just to increase accuracy make sure there's no tip dry I'll just turn the air pressure down a touch. With the air cap off, you can get really close. A little bit too much trigger tension, I'd say. I do like that you can adjust the trigger tension through the opening, which is cool. Yeah, it's pretty precise. Just getting tiny amounts of paint into 
into the squares. Let's open it up a bit. Yep, okay, so I'd say the fine lines, you're kind of looking at something like that. This is with the air cap off, of course. Dots, you're looking at something like that. Let's see if we can follow a line. Pretty good. Okay, and the widest it sprays, let's pop the air cap back on. Just give it a quick clean. I'm getting some tip dry, but this could be just old Tamiya paint. Okay, that's its widest. It does like to accumulate paint in the air cap. They do mention this in the instructions. It's definitely worth spraying off to the side and then you get lovely graduated atomized paint. Okay, I'd say there's a slight amount of sticky trigger, but you can dial that in and adjust the tension. So that's not really the airbrush's fault. You know, I'm just maybe not used to this squared off style of trigger. Okay, good. We got there in the end. It was no fault of the airbrush. It was operator failure in that I didn't realise just how thin the paint needs to be on this. So I can now say wholeheartedly that this is a nice detail airbrush. It did take me a while to dial it in and you do need to keep your paint thin. But as you can see in this section here, it's more than capable of very detailed painting. I just feel a bit of resistance at the bottom of the trigger push. Just see if I can loosen that up. Okay, I've completely dialed back the trigger response and now it's working a lot better for me. A bit more instant, making it a bit more accurate. And I think users of this airbrush are going to need to watch their paint mixes very carefully. But once you get the right paint mix, it's clear that it's very accurate. It's up to the standard of previous Galeri products I've looked at. And so it will all depend on the price point. I suspect this will be competitively priced again, like all their products. So I really like the general feel of it. It's quite light and with the paint cup removed, it is of course even lighter. It's got a nice balance to it. The trigger takes a little, a little bit of getting used to for me, but I was easily able to adjust that. And what I like is you can reach the tensioning adjuster for the trigger through the design of the handle, which is really cool, as well as being able to undo the needle. I never really use the paint limiter. What do they call it? The fluid adjustment knob, they call it. I never really use that. But yeah, once I got used to this and worked out what sort of paint it likes to spray, I really enjoyed using it. And I'm definitely going to keep this in the collection and use it. Definitely a fine detail airbrush. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to pick this up. It feels like a premium product. It's very well manufactured. It's got some nice features. Initially, I thought this cutout was a bit of a gimmick, really. But actually, it does work surprisingly well in giving you access to all areas that you'd need to gain access to. The Mac valve, of course, simple to use, nice addition. I like the way that you can conceivably change your paint cup size, although this is perfect for detail painting. Being able to remove this cup and just use that is a good idea. I like the simplicity of the nozzle system in that it's drop in, drop out. And I like the general approach of Galeri. They're really good at trying to mobilize a fan base and promote their products. And every time I've been sent something, I've been blown away by it. Now I'll admit with this one, I was initially thinking, what am I doing wrong? What's wrong with it? But once I got it sorted out, it was up to their usual standard. I mean, very impressive finish, very impressive standard. This is going to retail at $89.99, so they're saying $90. However, to celebrate the launch, they are reducing that price with a 15% discount, making it $76.99 for the 0 0.2. That is an incredible price point. The quality of this brush for that price is incredible. The downsides for me, I would say, is there's a tiny bit of clunkiness in the trigger. 
I think with time that will loosen up. You saw with the thick paints it couldn't cope, the needle was just dispensing too much paint, it was splattering all over the place, so you will, if you want to have a good time with this airbrush, you will need to dilute your paints carefully. So anyway, I'm going to use this on one of my next builds, which brings me to this. Now this is a Panzer IV, it's the Airfix kit, and it's been built by my mate Herbie. He also built the King Tiger that I sprayed with him in a uh, video a couple of years back where we speed painted it. This time there's no pressure on me, so I thought why not use some of these new airbrushes, like the Mobius, on this particular tank. It's just got to be set in Normandy, so I plan to be painting this over the holidays. It has the same Tamiya pre-cut decal style Zimmerit, which worked really well under paint on the King Tiger. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Hopefully I'll get some decent bench time in over the holidays to do that. In other news, just wanted to give those of you following the E36 touring build from my car channel, I have managed to Thanks to the help of Nisha, you can see now, I have managed to completely swap the grills and it's worked really rather easily for the facelift grills. So those of you following this build, it is ongoing. I've removed various items that uh, were inconsistent with the facelift model and I'm going to upgrade those, but the biggest thing, I'll throw in some shots now, was upgrading the uh, grills using the 3D printed parts and I've also been busy changing the dashboard. I spent a lot of time grinding away there to get the correct dashboard for my car as this dashboard is the airbag one and my car has the little indentation there. So that project is ongoing. I just wanted to round off today with this kit and it's a really important kit and you may ask why is this kit important and I'll tell you why. Because this is the first kit in many, many years that I have actually gone out and bought. I have not bought plastic kits apart from the BMW, which you've seen in other videos, but that was actually bought after this, and it was kind of more linked to the purpose of the channel. This was a kit I just bought because I wanted to. I loved the look of it. And it's the US Army skid loader made by Gecko. They do a few kits of the same base vehicle, they do the skid steer version with wheels, with special tracks on the wheels. They do different versions now. I just brought one out with a pallet attachment. And I was just smitten by this kit. And it made me actually go out and order something for the first time in years. And if time permits, I'm hoping to get started on this build. I can do a full review if anyone's interested, but it looks like most kits nowadays, let's face it, super high quality, nicely, nicely detailed. But it's just one of those kits I just couldn't resist. It was on special offer and I was just like, I've got to own this. And it's quite interesting that I haven't bought kit for so many years, mainly because I've got loads in the stash, you know, like most modelers. But I just, just everything, I guess it reflects my areas of interest. So there's a YouTube channel I particularly enjoy that people may well know called Diesel Creek. And I just have a bit of a fantasy of one day owning a piece of machinery like this and just kind of pushing dirt around, which I think would be great fun. That fantasy translated into a model purchase. It's a really nice looking kit. I've been researching it, so I've started to dig up archive it's just a really interesting vehicle and it's one of those vehicles that just sparked my interest. It's essential to any army, I suppose, to have these kind of engineering vehicles. And I just love the, the general aesthetic of it. I'm really excited by the weathering potential, of course, because I love a bit of weathering. And it's also possibly a chance to start off a bit of a collection of all these utilitarian vehicles that I enjoy watching on YouTube so much. So I thought it was interesting to tell you the kit that has made me reach for my wallet. <laughs> and it's a strange one. It's a little skid steer. So who knows, maybe I'll get time to start this build or maybe it will become another one of my infamous shelf queens. Who knows? I'm gonna end on the kit that I treated myself to for Christmas. I hope you've also treated yourself to something nice, that you have a restful break. And don't forget to check out the new car channel. I'll leave a link down below.
So I shall see you in 2024. Thanks for watching and bye. Subscribe for our latest videos.